Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 14th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Las Vegas, Nevada. Rob is covering today one of my favorite topics in his diary, and that's IPv6. In particular, networks that believe that they are not using IPv6. Most modern operating systems have IPv6 enabled by default, which means that you may not have any infrastructure providing IPv6 connectivity, but your operating systems are almost always set up for IPv6. So so all that hacker, or in Rob's case, a pen tester has to do is provide that infrastructure for you. And they're now able to move around your network pretty much unimpeded by any of your security devices. So whenever you have an assumption like that you're not using IPv6, always back it up by actually making sure that you detect any rogue IPv6 traffic. And Rob also provides some advice in how to configure switches and the like in order, for example, to prevent rogue routers from offering IPv6 addresses. Probably the most serious vulnerability was addressed in Microsoft's Patch Tuesday this week was CVE 2017-8759. This was the .NET SOAP parser vulnerability that was exploited by FinFisher. If you remember, FinFisher is an APT campaign that was described by FireEye and the exploit arrived as a Word document. Well, we now have a detailed tutorial about how to exploit this particular vulnerability. Turns out it's actually pretty straightforward to create a malicious RTF document that will exploit this vulnerability. Again, the RTF document and Word is really just a delivery vector. The actual vulnerability was in the .NET component that parses the malicious file. Given these instructions and the easy exploitability, this is definitely a must patch vulnerability now. And you definitely need to have this patched by the end of the week if that's not even too late. And Display Widgets is a pretty popular WordPress plugin with about about 200,000 installs according to pluginvulnerabilities.com. Well, there have been a lot of documented vulnerabilities in WordPress plugins, but this time it's actually not a vulnerability we're talking about, but an intentional malicious modification. What apparently happened was that this particular plugin was sold earlier this year to a group with malicious intentions who then updated the plugin with a backdoor. Now, soon after the plugin changed owners, it was modified to load additional code from a private server. This is in so far somewhat problematic because of course uh, the code that's being downloaded from the private server can be changed at any time. And as a result, you can't really review that code reliably. Also, the code that was downloaded was rather bulky. It was 50 megabytes of code and it did add a geolocation component that would report the IP addresses, the web page visited and the like user agents to a remote server. Neither the site installing this plugin nor any user visiting the site was ever informed about this kind of data collection. Now, after researchers complained about uh, this particular plugin behavior, it was removed, but shortly later it appeared again, appeared again with various malicious components and ultimately never really got or shut down. And apparently there are other WordPress plugins that do experience similar behavior. So in short, be careful when you're installing code on your servers. Of course, in this particular case, it would have been difficult for some to spot the problem given that the plugin did have a reasonable good reputation until it was taken over by the new developer and of course it would have passed all code integrity checks because these changes were made by the new developer intentionally. Well and that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye!